you've only really viewed fetishism through the lens of BDSM, which doesn't really encapsulate all kinks no. and all fetishes, right? And it's only been viewed for a, for a long, long time, up until the 70s and 80s, basically through an entirely negative context. So through non-consensual contexts or through forensic contexts, you know, so only when sort of crimes have been committed. It's just, it's just kind of ridiculous. It's very normal. You know, I say normal as in it's pretty normal to have a kink, right? I mean, a kink is almost inherently sort of a deviation from the norm in yeah. terms of your sexual interest, but having a kink in and of itself is relatively normal. Well, I guess the question would be whether having a deviation from the norm is a deviation from the norm. Yeah. yeah. Right? Whether it's more normal to have um any any one um deviation from the norm. Like or is it more normal normal being the in the in the average mathematical sense mm -hmm. to be like complete vanilla. Um like I don't know the answer. I don't know what the statistics are. Yeah, I mean the, the statistics are tough actually because again the studies that have been done on this have largely been done through the lens of BDSM. And on top of that, there is a degree to kink, right? Like you can you can be someone that is into kink. You could be one of those people that you know um sort of has the has the sort of leather dog mask on whenever they go to Pride and, you know, they live their life in a sort of a dom and sub situation. You can have someone that, that, that sort of has their whole life through the lens of fetishism and kink. Yeah. And then you could have someone who's got a bit of a kink for, you know, I don't know. I keep on going back to candles. I don't know why. Choking. Choking. You've got I, someone who's got a choking kink. I find it interesting that, like, it's only viewed through, like, crime and criminals. And, like, that kind of makes sense because I feel like back in the day, people wouldn't go around boasting about the fact they like to be choked. Yeah. Like... Yeah. It makes sense why no, there's they like love talking about No, it. I well, know got but the like, internet now. Yeah, 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 but it makes sense that it wouldn't just... have been really studied because it was seen as a deviancy. We're getting more studies now, but I mean I was looking at ones from twenty twenty one and twenty nineteen that were, you know, meta analyses that were looking at lots of different studies mm. and it's it's kind of sparse in you know, in some areas, in, in looking at how they form and, 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 and looking at them less as a sort of psychiatric condition as a as a thing that is wrong with someone and looking at them more as hey let's try and understand this this aspect of human sexuality yeah. you know it'd be so interesting to see the difference in like differences in like cultures in kinks yeah like wouldn't that be such an interesting study to be like oh does this exist over there yeah i mean i guess i guess probably just through my lack, lack of exposure to other cultures but mm. kink seems like something that's it only fits in Western culture in my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it weirdly, it only, like, I, obviously, I know people around the world can, can have kinks, but the kind of kink and fetishism that exists, you know, here, yeah. I can't imagine existing elsewhere in the same way. So, for example, I mean, people living their entire lives, um, you know, uh, through, uh, you know, um, with sort of kinks and fetishes. Uh, you know, going to pride parades with like, yeah, the dog yeah, mask yeah, yeah. And, and, and leather daddies and all that sort of stuff. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I guess it depends if kink is something, well, it's probably a bit of both, but if it's something genetic or if it's something sort of like a reaction to, if it's a reaction to, say, Western Judeo-Christian culture mm -hmm. and its attitude ah, to sex yeah. and then a sort of yes. inversion of those things, then it could be they, it could very much be but if it's something like what Noah was saying where like for example a foot fetish or a foot kink is due to or possibly due to the close proximity of the wiring for the foot being mm -hmm. too close to the like to being close to the wiring for the genitals on the homunculus in the brain mm -hmm. then that's a that's a genetic factor and so yeah, but it's probably both. And you can probably be predisposed to a kink and then not actually have it expressed <gasps> yeah. due to your upbringing or be not genetically predisposed to a kink and be raised in a Judeo-Christian, very sex-obsessed, as in se the opposite yeah, of sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sex, modesty. Like, uh, modesty, like prudist, pr pr prudy culture. And then you have a, a reaction in reverse to that and you get really kinky because you're like, screw this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to make it seem as though I'm saying no one in other countries can have kinks. That's that's not at all. That's not at all what I think. I'm just pointing out a weird little bias that exists in my head, and I think it's really important to sort of consider this because culture can have a massive influence on kink and fetishism and and all of that stuff because it it's so modular. It affects so many different aspects of our lives. Uh, it really affects who we are. And a lot of these studies are bringing up one specific aspect of culture um, from the past sort of uh, I guess decade or so. Okay. Can you guess what it is? 
one bit of culture the one internet specific, porn one very specific work that has influenced um the public perception oh, of bdsm yes of course uh, uh that thing about the rich businessman being whipping a young employee of his or something what's it called what? uh 50 shades, Fifty shades of gray, gray. Fifty shades of gray. Oh, 50 shades of gray oh I've yeah, not read, yeah, yeah i've not read the full thing so but not something on those lines of rich businessman young woman and then they get into women it's twilight fanfic yeah 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 yeah. that's insane how much of an impact just like one book series has had on like people's sexuality it was it's shocking honestly no i remember, I, I remember my... when it came out like all the news articles about there like being like wet cucumbers left in the Jeez. in the cinemas it's what? like mums and their friends because people are, uh, would go wow. and you know yeah i, I i'm sure they yeah would. yeah it's like yeah. mums and their friends reading the books and then passing the books around to yeah. each other it, like <laughs> why leave it why well, you, leave you don't want to walk out it. in the like, like it's dark well, in there you don't want to walk out with a used the, cucumber handbag. <laughs> that's true yeah i don't know I, well, I mean i personally wouldn't do either of those things but <laughs> <laughs> take it with you i just feel like that's disrespectful you do you oh, 100%, man yeah, it just yeah. feels a bit cheeky i too. think people probably left the work cucumber there as a joke right rather than actually because you wouldn't you wouldn't leave a used cucumber would you? I mean, people use oh God, lose yeah, people, are, people put yeah. use condom. I've been in a gay club bathroom. I'm surprised they used a condom. Good for them. <laughs> Safety first. But no, I I mean, Fifty Shades was like Harry Potter, but for middle aged women. Yeah. Yeah. Although I suppose that's just Harry Potter nowadays, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But but seriously, like it, it took over the world. It was like a Pokemon phenomenon. That like that yeah. level is what it felt like, and. To see it being referenced in multiple scientific papers is insane. Yeah. You know, and they bring it up because it, it makes sense. This has influenced the, sort of the view of BDSM in the wider culture. But also, Fifty Shades is a terrible, like, absolutely yeah. abysmal representation <laughs> of kink and fetishism and BDSM because a, a lot of it does not deal with consent, consent. <laughs> which is a massive part if you speak to anyone that's sort of they call kinksters uh, let's call them kinksters that's kinksters. a fun name you know kinksters or fetishists or people that are really into bdsm a massive part of that for them is consent like yeah. those people that are you know that are so um that are into that kind of sex are so up on that you know they've got all of these sort of like all of these sort of uh i guess processes for you know like sort of dealing yeah. dealing with those sort of emotions like there's this whole idea of aftercare and whatnot yeah like bdsm whilst it may seem sort of violent and rough and and, and all of that sort of stuff at its core it is it is built on consent and mutual enjoyment i was gonna say like i i follow a few people on twitter they're like the kink community it's like a whole community mm -hmm. it's like a lifestyle for some people